Hi, I'm Sullivan Kaufman. I'm at Atkins Arboretum, and today I want to introduce you to the sweet gum tree, Liquid Amber Sterasiflua. Although most of us are probably familiar with the sweet gum tree because of sweet gum balls, and I'll come back to them, the tree was originally known for its resinous gum called copalm balsam or storax. Donald Peaty in A Natural History of Trees describes how Don Bernal Diaz del Castillo wrote of it while witnessing in 1519 a meeting between Hernando Cortez and the Aztec Emperor Montezuma. After he, the emperor, had dined, they presented to him three little canes highly ornamented containing liquid amber mixed with an herb they call tobacco. And when he had sufficiently viewed and heard the singers, dancers, and buffoons, he took a little of the smoke of one of these canes. Don Bernal may have recognized the scent of liquid amber from its Asiatic cousin, whose sap was prized as incense in Christian churches and Indian temples. Another Spanish explorer, Alvar Nunez Cabeza de Vaca, recognized the tree while exploring Florida in 1528. The name liquid amber refers to its fragrant resin, and sterasiflua means flowing with gum. The sap of the tree hardens into a gum or resin-like solid, and it's sold as copalm balm or storax. Native Americans used it as chewing gum, as well as for treating wounds and other ailments. Extracts from the sap, leaves, and twigs do in fact have antibacterial and anti-inflammatory characteristics and they're still being tested for production of new drugs. The sap was also initially used to make polystyrene, invented in 1839. The compounds in polystyrene are now manufactured artificially. Liquid amber used to be in the witch hazel family, the Hamamelidaceae, but it's now in the Altigenaceae after taxonomists examined both DNA and fossil evidence. The family is named after the tropical and subtropical Altingia genus, which taxonomists are now also calling liquid amber. During the Cretaceous more than 65 million years ago, liquid amber trees could be found around the northern hemisphere, but glaciations and climate change isolated populations. There are two other liquid amber species that are especially closely related to, to liquid amber sterisiflua, one in Turkey, El Orientalis, and one in China, Liquid Amber Formosana. Liquid Amber Sterasiflua ranges from southern New York, south over the Mexican highlands, and into Central America. They often grow as an early successional tree and can be, dominant, and can be the dominant tree for a few decades. But as forests mature, they gradually give way to more shade-tolerant species. They are expected to expand their range northwards along the coast with the warming climate. Sweet gum trees typically grow 50 to 150 feet tall with a neat pyramidal crown. They begin to flower and produce seeds only after 20 to 30 years of growth. Sweet gum flowers in the spring with separate male and female flowers on the same tree. The male flowers form a dense cluster above the emerging leaves and produce loads of wind-dispersed pollen. The female flowers dangle below in a rounded cluster with lots of sticky stigmas to capture the pollen. These balls gradually form the well-known hard spiny fruit of the sweet gum. Technically, the fruit is made up of many two-celled capsules, each holding two tiny wind-dispersed seeds that look like a small maple seed. A single ball averages 20 to 30 seeds, although it can contain up to 50 in a good year or none at all in a bad year. Most of the seeds land within a few hundred feet of the parent tree. Sweet gum balls get a bad rap for causing sprained ankles, shooting up like grenades when the lawn is mowed, and providing ready ammunition to kids. Although I think kids are equally likely to want to use gum balls to make fairy houses or other crafts and more recently for their resemblance to the COVID-19 virus. But the fruits are an important source of food for small beaked birds like sparrows, chickadees, and wrens. The capsules release the seeds slowly from fall into winter, feeding birds, chipmunks, and squirrels, among other animals. 
Sometimes on a quiet, cold winter day, you can hear a rain of tiny sweet gum seeds hitting the ground. Some gardeners use the balls as a loose mulch and as a deterrent to slugs and to dogs or cats that would like to roll in a particular area. The balls do decay over a year or two, returning nutrients to the soil. The leaves are quite distinct from other trees as well. They're star-shaped with five to seven points and with toothed edges. They're light yellow-green in color and the upper surface is often glossy. They give off a pleasant spicy or piney odor when crushed. Several big moth caterpillars feed on sweet gum leaves, including luna moths, promethea moths, and the hickory horn devil. Sweet gum twigs start out green to reddish in color, marked by large leaf scars and occasional small lenticels. The large terminal buds are protected by green to orange shiny scales. Corky wings often develop in the second year along the twigs. The bark tends to be gray-brown and furrowed into irregular ridges. Sweet gums are known for their ability to re-sprout if cut or injured. Deer and rabbits like to browse on these shoots, and beaver will cut down sweet gums to feed on the bark. In wet areas, sweet gums develop mainly lateral roots, but in dry sites, they develop a deep tap root. The roots associate with mycorrhizal fungi. More than 12 species of fungus have been found associating, associating with sweet gum roots, including the fly agaric Amanita muscaria, Cantharella sibarius, a chanterelle, a couple of boletes, and Calvatia craniformis, the brain puffball. In one experiment, seedlings growing in soil treated with a single fungus grew eight times taller and had 80 times more biomass than seedlings grown in uninoculated soil. Sweet gums are very popular in landscaping, except of course with homeowners who object to the spiny gumballs. Consider all the interesting ways the fruits can be used though, such as this 2013 gumball crossing outdoor sculpture by Maryland artist Howard and Mary McCoy. The trees in the fall turn marvelous shades of color from deep purple to orange and yellow, one of the showiest trees in southeastern forests. Some varieties have been developed that don't produce fruits, and other homeowners inject their trees with hormones to keep the trees from flowering. There are two forms of sweet gum originally found in the wild, one with rounded leaf edges, form a rotundifolia, and one with weeping branches, form a pendula. This narrow cultivar is growing at the Mount Cuba Center in Delaware. The trees have been used for restoring coal strip mine lands, particularly along stream banks, as the trees are tolerant of the contaminated soils around the mines. Trees are also harvested for timber in the southeast. Harriet Tubman's father, Ben Ross, built a cradle for his baby out of a hollow sweet gum tree trunk, and Tubman said her earliest memory was of being rocked in that cradle. Most of the wood sold commercially is used for veneer and plywood, but the rosy heartwood of mature trees is valued for furniture making. In forestry and woodworking, the tree is often referred to as red gum or satin walnut. Whether you are along the water or at the edge of a field, look out for sweet gum balls, or especially in the fall, their beautiful leaves. <laughs>